Hey, Single Plane Academy Gold members, this is Chandler Rusk, Master Instructor for Graves Golf, and this week we wanted to do a uh, Bryson and Mo side-by-side and just talk about the key things that make the single plane swing uh, the simplest, most efficient motion. And so we're going to look at some down the line, some face on, even have a cool top view. Basically just talk about things that we look for on video. And that's the cool thing about what Bryson is doing is, you know, he's a scientist always looking at the data and how to move his body to get a very predictable and consistent result and uh, what he was able to do as wing foot was just incredible so you know congrats to Bryson on all of his success and you know really breaking the barriers to to finding simpler and easier ways to be able to uh, master this game and so that's exactly what the the single plane is what's also cool is that as Bryson has kind of transformed his body, you know, over the last several months is he's also gravitated closer to Mo. So um, we're going to talk about a couple things here um, that, you know, Bryson is even doing more so like Mo um, than what he was doing maybe two, three years ago. So we have some of that footage as well. Let's take a look first and foremost. So, you know, the whole gist of this is to put the body in a position at address to simplify the ability to get to impact. And so obviously we look for is the single plane alignment from this down the line view. So that's the alignment of the club shaft going through the under part of the trail forearm and going right through the middle of the back. And so starting the club shaft on that plane simplifies the ability to get to impact because that's where impact is going to be. And so you can see with Mo on the right, how the plane line goes through the trail forearm and goes right through the middle of the back. Um, That's a key alignment that we look for. The other thing is the lead arm is visible above the trail arm, okay? So that's a function of the arms pointing in the direction of the golf ball and also how the body has side bend from the face-on view. Now, the other cool thing, the thing that Bryson has really changed over the last couple years is Bryson has gotten a little bit further from the golf ball and also his forward bend has increased because of it. You can see here that his forward bend is right at about, you know, in that 40 to 45 degree range. 40 degrees is kind of ideal what we like to look for with a driver. You can see he used to stand more upright and so his spine is definitely a little bit more upright you can see they're not even quite getting to the the 40 degree mark you know four or five degrees of difference there and uh, on the left is definitely more of what we teach uh, getting the upper body bent forward uh, to where the spine is very much on the same plane as the golf ball and so if you look at Mo very similar um, right in that 40 to 45 range so now, with this position here, what you'll see is that as, as Bryson takes it into his backswing and returns it down to impact, you can see how it goes right back to the same place it started. So there's the definition of single plane, starting and impacting on the same plane. And so a lot of that is stemmed from this address position. Uh, A couple things that are cool to see here in their address. I know it's a little bit hard to see with Bryson because of the shadow, but this club has a relationship of the arm and the lead side of the body. So notice how it goes right to his right to his lead shoulder. And then same thing with Mo is Mo's club has a relationship to the lead side of his body and lead shoulder as well. Now, in terms of body position, you can see stance width is pretty similar. Both Bryson and Mo, you can see how their spine is in a uh, side bent position. And so Mo has a little bit more side bend than, than Bryson. And so that aligns that arm just a little bit better. But you can really see it from this face on view. Let's look at some key things. The first key thing here is the rod position. So that's the alignment of the club shaft and the lead arm uh, from this face on perspective. And so uh, that is the same position 
that the body is going to return at the moment of impact. Uh, the club shaft is always going to align with the arms that are swinging it uh, to be able to incorporate maximum force and compression. And also, what's good to know is that the lead hand is in a neutral position to where when the back of the hand is going towards the target, the club face is square. And so it's the rod position and also the grip and club face position. There's not a more pure way to set the arm, hand, and club face position that neutralizes everything and eliminates variables to where you can just take it back and return it right back to that same point. So you can see here with Mo, back of the hand and club face score to the target. Now, in order for them to create this rod position, both of them have what we call side bend. And so it's the tilt of the spine away from the target. That also is what allows the trail arm. You can see Mo's trail hand V is going right up to his trail shoulder. And same thing with Bryson, trail hand V going to the trail shoulder. And so that's putting the arm in a position where it can just fold and unfold. It doesn't have to have any added movement to it. So we call it non-rotational. Uh, Bryson calls it a very similar thing. I think he calls it like zero rotation or something like that to take the club back and get it right back to consistent impact. As you watch Bryson, as he starts to... Uh, as he started to really ramp up his, uh, his speed and how fast he rotates, well, his arms and hands actually in his backswing had to come more to the inside. And so what's interesting about Bryson is as he takes it back, you can actually see this club getting more in and underneath the plane than it was before. And you can see how when he takes it back, how... Uh, because of the more upright position and how his shoulders are more open here, front of the shoulders are open, this is going to force Bryson to take the club a little bit more to the outside. And here on the left, because he has more forward bend and we can see more of this lead arm, the shoulders are a touch more to the right. This allows Bryson to work more under the plane. So here on the left, he's definitely rotating, getting more to the inside. And then as he makes that torso rotation turn, he's able to get uh, a lot more width and leverage. And so here on the right, you know, it's definitely went more outside. Body's more upright. Lead arm's very high. And when he pulls down, he just doesn't quite have that, that width and leverage that he has now and that has uh, along with the increase in, in body weight and rotational speed that's just a recipe to hit very very long golf shots so he has an incredible path going back perfectly on plane and so that's the same thing that you see with Mo the arms follow the rotation of his body he begins to leverage there's parallel and underneath and you can also see from this top view how you can see that both of their paths are going to the inside. So both of the paths here are going to the inside. The club shaft is just an extension of the lead arm. So they're rotating and maintaining that rod position. And you can see how this club still has a relationship to the lead side of the body. Now, as they both take a backswing here, a lot of similarities to, to Mo in this look here. You know, if you watch that trail hip, you can see how the lower body is rotating. Notice how you don't see any added rotation or action of his hands. As he leverages up, you can see it's right on plane there. Beautiful width there with that lead arm position. You can see how that lead arm is nice and, nice and straight. Um, that's a real key way of being able to generate uh, speed and lag is that lead arm getting a nice leveraged position. You'll see Mo create leverage earlier in his backswing, and that allows Mo to not have to rotate as much. And so his body reaches a certain point to where the arm folds, the hands hinge, and he sets it as he goes a little bit earlier into uh, the top of his backswing. 
note that Bryson is young. He's very strong, very flexible, so he can generate speed by not necessarily creating a whole lot of leverage uh, in his backswing. And then he's just going to continue rotating and it extends on that plane. And so, yes, it he does rotate a lot. Uh, the trail arm and trail shoulder get behind him quite a bit, and that's what makes it makes the club appear to be a, across the line. And as Mo gets to the top of the swing, you can see his hands are right on the plane, just a little bit shorter than Bryson. This is one area that you do see different than Mo. Um, you know, obviously when Mo was younger, he would take the club back a little bit further. Since Bryson has a lot more torso rotation and his spine is a little bit more upright, this puts that trail arm just a little bit more behind him. But the cool checks that, that you look for is if you look at his lead arm and hand position, you can see how that's flat. And that's also matching the club face position. So all in an alignment, just as if they started. And the trail arm is folded and you can see how that forearm to wrist has a little bit of angle, okay? So it's very similar to if you were to hammer a nail into a post. And then as Mo gets to the top, the lead arm and hand in a nice flat position, matching the club face, and again, trail forearm and wrist matching the plane as well. So very pure position right there. And so let's just bring this back. A couple things to look at as they both take it back. One. Bryson's trail leg. As he rotates, it maintains its angle, maintains its position. And as he transitions, his lower body transitions, you can see how the lead knee is getting braced and his body is also in side bend. And so as Mo takes it back, you see trail leg position that's the brace. They're rotating around the trail leg. And you can see Mo has that side bend. And when he starts his transition, you can see very similar positioning here into a flex lead knee. That takes the stress off of the back. Now as they come down, and you can see how the club is coming from an inside path to the golf ball. Very similar path and body position. And as Bryson comes into his downswing, you'll see that the club shaft planes. And as he goes to impact, the club shaft is right on the plane and the lead arm is slightly above. And as you watch Mo, you'll see a very similar transition on the plane. You can see how the lead arm is higher. What's cool to see here is how similar Bryson and Moe's impact position is. Club shaft realigning at the same point it started. You can see how that rod has returned back to the same spot. Club shaft, arm, hand, club face. You can see how Bryson's lower body's rotated open. His torso is also rotated open. With Moe, hips and torso matching each other. And you can see right here, just before impact, the trail foot is on the ground. Most trail foot definitely on the ground. Bryson heel is just slightly up, but definitely not on the toe. He has so much speed, it's very difficult for him to keep his feet on the ground. Um, he's really, really wailing at it. So very, very similar things that are going on here. And even as Bryson goes into his release and his finish, his body is rotating and that trail arm has a nice extension to it, very similar to what you'll see here with Mo. And as you can see on the way through, look at their torso position. That rotation of the torso on the way through is what allows this trail arm to extend. A pure release position of the club face going back to that toe over position that we talk about, back to the plane. And that's where Mo felt like he was shaking hands with the flag stick. And that club face is in a nice released planed position. And even on the way through, you can see how Bryson planes the club shaft through the shoulders. And same thing with Mo. 
So, you know, another thing that's very cool, this is exactly what we do inside of our Single Plan Academy Gold membership. So if you're out there wanting coaching, you can send us videos anytime you want and have our master coaches do a side-by-side -side in comparison to our model and give you exactly what to work on to where you can hit more consistent golf shots and uh, increase your speed and distance as well. So and we're also going to kick off the winter training series with a couple of new 90-day plans covering all ways to be able to train and also ways to increase speed and distance over the winter. So um, the off-season, best time to really work on your game and uh, spend some time gearing up for, for next season. So if you have any questions, just reach out to us at gold at gravesgolf.com and hope you guys enjoyed these videos and we'll talk to you soon.